I just wanted to have this as a memory in the future for uh, if where if we end up shelving the show, then best moment of your life tonight, man. It'll be the best moment of my life. Anyways, future me, thanks for listening, and as always, stay awesome. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And we're going to have a fun episode today. We're going to do something that's... As opposed to our non... Actually, no. I was about to say, as opposed to our non-fun episodes, we, we have, have some non-fun episodes. This season, this season took... This is our sophomore season. It took a dark turn at times. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with that. Right. We had some dark stuff in season oh, one. That's good. But today, it's going to be an interesting episode because it's something that's kind of close to our hearts. Something that neither of us do enough of. Yeah. Actually, something that apparently Huck does vastly more than me. Well, in the comfort of my bedroom. Yes, in the comfort of his bedroom. No. Actually, they're almost all in my bedroom. I have decent lighting there. We should tell them what it is. We're talking about vlogging, (laughs) you sick perverts. Listen, all right? Lots of things happen in the comfort of one's bedroom that aren't perverted. Yeah. I can even think of some of them. Yeah, like filming a podcast. Like filming a podcast. Yeah. Anyway, icebreaker. Yeah. Who is your favorite vlogger who is not John or Hank Green? Because we keep, we have like the, the hugest bro crushes on the Vlog Brothers. And every time somebody's like, hey Jim, what's your favorite whatever? I just have to be like, I really like Hank Green. And I really like John Green. Yeah. And this is not at all surprising. But who is, no, who is your favorite vlogger? Who isn't one of the Brothers Green? I'd say um, my favorite vlogger right now that I'm mm-hmm. watching most consistently, and I've talked about him in previous shows, is uh, I can't pronounce his last name, but his name's Raymond, and his handle is The Online Coach. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You talked about yeah. him uh, in a previous podcast that I don't remember what it was about or uh, anything like that. Yeah, if we want to do some like like sleuthing, we can always put a link over my face. To we'll that, do some research. To that we'll one. do some research. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, his vlogs are hybrids of personal stuff and then his workouts. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really fun because it's almost like I don't know how much thought he put into the conception of his of his vlogs, but um, he's got one guy. Uh, he goes by Tankster. I'm not sure what his full name is, but they call him Tankster. Um, who clearly was somebody who tried to work out on his own, didn't really get very far. But Raymond, being a professional, been doing this for like 16 years, has taken him under his wing, employs him at the gym that he owns, okay. and like helps him to reach his fitness goals and. Like you, if you start to look at uh, Tankster's physique over the long run, like when they first started versus where he is now, like he's developed quite a bit of muscle and whatnot under the tutelage of, and like it's it's all through their friendship. You know, they prank yeah. each other. Um, Raymond relies on Tankster for for running the business and vice versa. Um, and it's just so it's just a really good vlog in terms. Like I'm getting more into to fitness, so I watch. I started watching the vlogs because they will film their exercises, so it gives me ideas or inspiration. Uh, but then he'll also sit down and talk about you know like his family or. Um, the business, like him being a, a solo entrepreneur, mm-hmm. you know, ru- uh, getting the place up and running. Because I think his gym must have only been opened up in the last like year and a half. It doesn't seem like it's been around for very long. Um, but he talks about that. Uh, recently, he's hosted other fitness vloggers at his gym, and he's tra- oh, cool. he traveled to Toronto nice. recently. Um, so yeah, it's just it's a real fun. Toronto from like isn't he in California? Yeah, he's wow. uh, that's a big trip. Yeah, no, he he uh, he came up. To film some stuff, like some promotional work, and oh, then to, okay. to, and to, uh, to tour around. So, cool. Uh, it just it's a all around great vlog. He's a very charismatic guy, uh, and he's also very um, social media geared. So he's got an Instagram account where he posts a lot of merchandise uh, shots of him, shots of the exercises. He also hmm. uses Periscope. Have you uh, seen Periscope? I do not know what Periscope is. Periscope is a video streaming service that's built. I don't know if it was made by Twitter, but it's certainly integrated through Twitter. So if you follow somebody on Twitter and they start periscoping, like broadcasting, you'll get notifications. It still of it. sounds like a sex thing. What is it? It's a video streaming. It is live stream. Like um, oh, okay, it's, but it's I think it's uh, tied to Twitter somehow. I'm so, familiar with that. Only it's called Twitch. Yeah, no this this <laughs> one is not video gaming. This one is usually just. You know, one person holding up their phone. There's a section in the bottom where people can chat and ask questions and oh, stuff. Neat. And then you tap the screen as like a like, and like hearts will filter up the right hand side. It's kind of a fun concept, and it's a neat. live, 
like imagine it's a live interaction. Yeah, it's a live mobile interaction because that's the other thing is that I think it's all done through mobile devices, not through sense. your computer. Yeah, um, which I like that the camera focused on my hand for a moment and boxed around it on the anyways thanks thanks man so i've rambled on long enough that is my favorite vlogger that is not one of the brothers green this is the first icebreaker in basically forever that you haven't had two answers to i have more than one answer but i'm limiting myself so so i i'm really hard pressed to pick a favorite vlogger especially with hank green uh out of the running but uh, i really like uh daystorm power who is a kick-ass dude. He does a lot of fitness stuff, too. He, does a lot of, he also do, makes some killer rap music. Uh, he's a really cool guy. Sort of... He's, he's He appears a lot like a self-made man, um, but he is very clear that he is not. Mm-hmm. Um, but he has definitely come a long way. Uh, I really love Jenna Marbles, because mm. she's funny. Uh, I used to watch more of her stuff, but I found... Uh, it's the same with uh, like Philip DeFranco, uh, Toby Turner, Jenna Marbles. I watched those before, but I I seem to have drifted away. Well, you watch from, YouTube like a forty year old man. I, I watch YouTube like a fifteen year old girl, and she's funny. She, no, no, I'm not saying she's not funny. It's just I tended to drift towards Hank and John's like Crash Course series, mm. and I'm currently learning about economics and politics. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably my my favorite vlogger who isn't Hank Green, is Karen Cabot. Uh, Karen Cabot is this... Uh, she's she's just sort of really nice and really clever. Uh, I saw her run a panel at VidCon. Um, she's a graphic designer, and she's sort of crafty, and she does lots of things. And she does those things in a way that uh, make her eminently likable. Like, she doesn't do a lot of comedy stuff. Mm-hmm. She just sort of talks about things. Um, she did, she did some work at YouTube for a little while, um, like an internship, uh, and she's really sort of social media savvy. She is, as I understand it, quite hip with the kids. I have one of her shirts that I got from uh, DFTBA.com, the why buy anything when I can buy books. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like she's just she does a lot of really neat things, uh, many of which are things I don't know how to do. I am not especially crafty, nor am I especially handy with Photoshop. Um, and she's a really cool sort of part of the Nerdfighter community. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Karen Cavett. Cool. Um, so, vlogging. Uh, Ryan has been doing a lot of vlogging. Uh, sort of in the privacy of his own channel. Com- Time-wise compressed, like I'll, I'll, it's been very dense in terms of lots of vlogging in a short amount of time. I, on the other hand, have done lots of vlogging over the past few years, but yeah. very little in the last six months. Mm-hmm. Um, a fact which bothers me continuously and thus keeps me from doing more of it. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, what, is, what does vlogging sort of mean when you do it? Why do you do it? Yeah. Uh, why did you start doing it apart from... The fact that I have a profound influence on every aspect of your life. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how much certain key people influence my life to that degree. Jim is definitely one of the influencers. Oh, God. Thankfully, it's a, it's a good influence. Yeah, sure. Um, so, I... I watch vlogs for the entertainment and, to a certain degree, a little bit of the personal connection that it affords. Because uh, generally... <laughs> The good vloggers, or at least the vloggers that tend to attract a lot of followers, I find tend to be very vulnerable seeming. Like they open themselves up and are not afraid to to make that connection, even if it's through the screen. Yeah. The vlogging that I do is not really that. So it's it's kind of funny that that's what a lot of times what I like about vlogs. But when when I think about vlogs, for me. Uh, the best analogy I can come up with is it's like logs from Star Trek. Um, you deliver them mostly in your bedroom without your shirt on? Pretty much. The, most of the vlogs that I've done so, so far... So you're like a Kirk log, really. is Kirk log or, um, <laughs> you know, middle, middle of the road Riker. You know, I got the beard. Right. Did Riker do a lot of commander's logs from with no shirt on? No. Sitting in his quarters being like, commander's log. Start a 
Shit, I'm so, so drunk, I don't even remember. Uh, he he tended to just play trombone, went down to Risa a few times. Yeah. Um, but no, I tend to view it as a faster, more efficient way of journaling, personal okay. journaling. Uh, and so that's what I mean by Star Trek. In Star Trek, you know, a lot of the scenes were framed around uh, audio and video logs. And I found, uh, and the, what prompted me not to go into a, a detail, but, you know, some stuff was coming up in my personal life. Um, I like to journal, but I find sometimes that it'll take me an hour to journal, something that might take me 10 minutes to film. Um, mm-hmm. It's a lot more polished when it's written down, um, but it tends to be a little bit more time consuming. Uh, so, 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 so stuff was going on in my life. Uh, some, there were some changes going on, and I needed somebody to talk to or somebody to vent to. And um, yourself, of course. And myself, because if I have one flaw, it's that I almost always refuse to be vulnerable. I, I refuse to be vulnerable around people, so the only person I could be vulnerable to is to myself, if that makes any sense. Uh, so that I, is the manliest thing I've ever heard you say in a in a long list of manly manly things. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's like it's it borders like on toxic masculinity. We've talked about that before. That I have I, I internalized like borderline toxic masculine ideas. Yes, borderline. So, uh, but anyway, so I. Um, so one day I'm like, you know what? My camera is, or sorry, my camera, my phone, which has a camera in it, is pretty decent. So I put it on the front facing, which I never do because I really never take selfies. And I turned it on and I just, I started talking to it as a way of getting the ideas out of my head and somewhere. Uh, but I didn't want to use up my entire, you know, SD card. So I'm like, well, I can upload them to YouTube and then they'll, they'll be there perpetually. Yep. Um, and so I started doing it and I... Even though I'm about, I've blogged about 22 videos, 23 uh, with the one that we did just before filming, um, I've done about 22 in the last three to four weeks, and I still don't know if I'm ever going to change them from um, private to unlisted, I think's the setting. Basically making it so that other people can view them. Um, But right now, they are messages or me talking to my future self. I always address future me as the recipient uh, and I'm talking to future me in order to remember or in order to, you know, like if I watch in the future, it'll, it'll be an easy way for me to, to keep the memory, you know because <laughs> memory is uh, fallible it, you know, fades over time, you forget the details and whatnot. so it's kind of really interesting that I can I can have this Mediated, but yet unmediated connection with my past. Mm-hmm. And I also, one of the reasons why I journal and one of the reasons why I'm vlogging is I'm assuming YouTube is going to be around for my kids and grandkids. I, I don't know, like, ah. tech, companies companies come and go, but I'm at the moment I have enough faith that YouTube will probably be around for some time. And I, it, even if it goes away, you can just download the videos. So I'm going out on a limb here. Yeah. But I don't think your grandkids are going to be super interested in Grandpa Huckle's uh, shirtless vlogs. Who knows, man? Like, listen, you kids, <laughs> listen to what I did back in the day. Grandpa, why are you pretending that you're from New York? <laughs> Shut up, kids! <laughs> listen here! All right, take the, check a look at this video. What format is this in? Gra- Grandpa, I don't... It's, uh, it's not beaming into my head. It's, yeah, it's not... How come I can't <laughs> smell anything? Oh, wow, am I, am I really glad I can't smell anything? Did they... Not have air conditioning in the past. <laughs> just, like, like, I'm not saying your grandkids are jerks. No, and I'm not saying that I'm important enough that anybody's going to want to watch this. I do know that there is some value in seeing how the past lived. So, like, it'll be interesting for somebody who's my age, so like late twenties, early thirties, who like in the future be able to compare how I'm describing living life. Like, imagine what it would be like to talk about somebody. Uh, just on the cutting edge of the internet. Somebody who's just on the cutting edge of, like, mobile devices. Like, obviously, we live through that, so we understand that. But try to explain that to a digital native. You know, the the seeming generation that's, that was born after us, right? Sure. So, and then extrapolate that forward. You know, the, the kids who grow up without, 
the dial tone of their uh, or the the uh, the modem starting up right of having to cut the internet connection to place a phone call. Those kids are already in high school. I know you're old. I know. I'm not. And I'm not saying these darn kids. What I'm saying is, <laughs> it'll be interesting to listen to these these. Uh, these uh, experiences described in the future. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm playing a long game. It's entirely possible that I'll never have children. It's not but, really... But there will be children there will, there will in be the future, Somebody probably. in the future who might dig it up through digital archaeology. Oh, um, and so that those are kind of the, all the things that are, are informing what I'm doing here. It's, it's largely uh, a way of me to efficiently journal in a way that's going to be preserved because it's fairly safe if it's uploaded to YouTube as opposed to my phone being lost, my journals being destroyed sure. or whatever. So it, yeah. it protects it. It gives it longevity. Um, accessible anywhere. Sometimes, you know, journals, like you have to carry them with you. Yeah. If it's on YouTube, as long as you can log in, you can access it pretty much from anywhere. Um, and it's just a, a different way of, of recording my thoughts. So that's what vlogging... That's what I use it for. That's what it means to me. I know it's not the only thing, but that's why I vlog. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> that's a lot. There's a lot to unpack in there. Wow. Yeah. A um, lot of also masculine Ryan, ideas. Super manly. And manly, yeah. <laughs> Leaving things for the future that matter. Well, that's why I'm sweating so much is because I'm wearing a shirt. Normally, I wouldn't be wearing a shirt right now. We're not doing this shirtless podcast. I thought we were going to. It's okay, but it's not, audio only. Yeah, not today. All right. No, um, vlogging means to me a lot of things. I find it to be really interesting and really strange at the same time. I had this conversation very briefly with a streamer that I follow, uh, Alex uh, Stacy from Loading Ready Run. I ran it. I, I saw Loading Ready Run at uh, Con Bravo in Hamilton okay. uh, a little while back. We did some videos. They were not in any of them. Uh, but we did have a Con Bravo video. But, uh, and one of the things I, I, I talked with him very briefly about was this notion that, like, I have watched Alex stream for dozens of hours. I have watched him play Dark Souls and scary games and all kinds of things. Like, like, and he has talked about all kinds of stuff. I have been there. I have I have watched live streams of that. I have watched YouTube replays of of that stuff. Like, I am privy to an inordinate amount of time of this man's life. And I met him in person. And I mean, not only was he taller than he seemed on the internet. <laughs> But, I mean, the internet's deceptive. I mean, if, if, if they're watching this video, they think that I'm taller than you, or the same height, and I'm actually, like, what, four or five inches shorter. Give or take, yeah, I tend to slouch, <laughs> and I think your upper torso is I have long. a very long torso. We've yeah. talked about that. But I met him, and there was this huge gulf where I'm like, I know this person. Mm. Like, I know them really well. You know, I know about things that they've done in the past because I've also seen Alex on Desert Bus, and like, I know all kinds of really personal things about them. And and if he remembers me from the chat, he may also know some really personal things about me. I've certainly talked about stuff that I've done or stuff that I'm nervous about or things like that. Uh, especially during Desert Bus, Desert Bus, every, you know, there's a lot of sort of really vulnerable people in the chat in Desert Bus. It's a great community for that. And. I I'm standing there and I'm like, there's this notion that I know him, but there's also this re the reality that I do not, and that I in no like I in no way know him. We're not going to recognize each other or anything like that. And I'm standing there and I, and I talk to him about it because I'm like, yeah, it feels really weird. Like this is huge cognitive dissonance. And he he's like, yeah, I get that all the time with people too that I'm that I am fans of, mm -hmm. and. Vlogging, but but despite that, watching people's vlogs allows me to connect with them. I mean, the the, the Green Brothers, for instance, John mm -hmm. and Hank Green. I, you know, I know things about their lives, and as a person who has a lot of anxiety, and as a person to whom, uh, sort of regular human life is sort of weirdly opaque. 
uh, seeing people do those things gives me a sense of normalcy and helps me sort of understand it. And I, and I watched that for a long time, and then I kind of started wanting to do it. I'm like, I don't know that I, I have anything especially cool to say or anything like that, but I like making stuff. And this seems like a really cool way to make stuff and a really cool opportunity to be vulnerable and confront some of that anxiety. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why I started blogging uh, years ago was because, you know, I was I was all mentally preparing myself to go into academia and I was really nervous about critique and criticism. So I was just like, I'm just going to start vo- I just start blogging. And then I'm going to have comments, and maybe people will toast me in the comments. And I've definitely got some blog posts where I got pasted in the comments because I was super wrong about stuff. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've, I, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I needed to confront that to move past it. And my, my very first YouTube video, before we started Wootsuit Riot, um, I was doing videos on my own channel. And my very first video is just me staring into my webcam, because I didn't have a video camera yet, uh, talking into a microphone, like my, my, my stage mic, that was just sort of on a stand in front of my face. And I wasn't even really talking into it very well. I was sort of like... Mm-hmm. Um, and I really, I really just want to make this... Because I knew... I had to make that. I had to make the bad one. Mm-hmm. I have made several bad ones, but that is the worst. Mm-hmm. Because if I waited until I had the perfect idea, I would I would never be brave enough to do it. And now I've made hundreds of vlogs and hundreds of videos, and I really enjoy it. Although I forget sometimes. But right now I've been in sort of this sort of non-vlogging uh, state when I'm hoping to emerge from. But every time I sit down and edit a video, I'm like, oh yeah. I like doing this. It's really fun. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, and, and part of, like, trying to get higher production value is creating more work. But I like doing it. Mm-hmm. I like learning new stuff and finding new ways to talk about stuff and, you know, helping people out. There's a lot of, there's a lot of sort of really fun things. I've had some really cool feedback from vlogging. And I like the sort of, not just the sort of feelings that it gives me, but the sort of people and relationships it creates. Uh, I went to VidCon a couple years ago, as I've mentioned several times. It is a couple years ago now, man. Yeah. Really need to go back. Mm-hmm. It's weird because I'm old, but I really like it there. And that was the thing, like when I went to VidCon, the average age of VidCon is like 15. Yeah. I actually spent a bunch of time hanging out with 15-year-olds. And let me tell you, I have a lot in common with them on account of, you know, I watch YouTube like a 15-year-old girl. (laughs) But I sort of, I connected with them on that level of, hey, I do this thing that you do. And we do it really differently. I met all kinds of cool cool vloggers, like people who do tech vlogs. and Like kids who are 15 who are, are, you know, doing all kinds of tech vlogs or makeup tutorials or things like that. We're just talking about their... I, I met... When I was charging my phone, I met this 17-year-old. Uh, and she... She just... She was a daily vlogger. And I was like, damn. And she's like, yeah, I just vlog every day. Just into her phone. <laughs> and and puts it up on YouTube. And I'm like, damn. How do you do that? I really want to do that. How do you do that? And she's just like, I just talk about stuff. And I talk about things that matter to me. Um, and sometimes people watch it and sometimes people comment. Um, because these are things that also matter to them. And I was like, okay, but how do you do that? And she was like, no, that's it. That's literally just it. Why is this confusing you? But yeah, it was a, it was a, it's a neat space to do that. And I like, I like being part of a culture that makes stuff mm-hmm. and does things because I feel like the alternative is that I am a part of a culture that does neither of those things and that makes me unhappy mm-hmm. and I want to be happy when it comes to like we've, we've talked about this a little bit though uh, the history of vlogging like you've been doing it now for how long uh, I started in 
Not that long. I started in 2013. I guess maybe like I'm January of 2013. It's just about the end. No, that can't be right because I've done three Vitas. Yeah, so that would have been v- Vita 2013, yeah. 2014, and 2015. So yeah, January of 2013 is when I started. I guess I'm just conflating it because I've no. I know you've had a, a blog. For longer than that, like you've yeah. had an online I, footprint. That, that I started the I started, yeah I started the blog about two years before that. Okay, and then you transitioned into it. So you've you've had a fairly decent run of vlogs then. Yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun. We play video games sometimes. Mm-hmm. We uh, we when I first started, um, I it was a vlog a week, and then I started writing a song every week. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I would get a Twitter idea for a song on Monday from somebody, and that song would go up on Friday, and I miss doing that. Mm-hmm. But I also, I didn't have a job that occupied a lot of, like, a ton of my creative energy. Yeah. Like I do now. <laughs> so it's harder, but I still like doing it. Yeah. Yeah, because as I said when I was uh, recapping, my experience is, you know, like, when I look at the uploads, the, the, I've, I've been filming now for probably five weeks, I would mm-hmm. say. Uh, but when I look at the upload history, it's only been three. It's probably the early videos are going to start rolling over into four weeks now, I imagine. So basically, I've only been uploading videos for a month. It feels a lot longer, but when I think about it, like I uh, early August, I went to Tennessee and Kentucky and whatnot. And I don't. I think I only just started vlogging after coming home from that. Maybe maybe I did one or two videos before I mm-hmm. left, but it was right around the start of August. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, it's been very dense is the only way to describe it. I would, uh, I've only just now caught up with my uploading um, backlog, mostly because I believe when I signed up for my internet provider, I'm only at, on the 140 gig bandwidth thing, but I believe after 2 a.m. they offer unlimited bandwidth, Ooh. or they don't count towards bandwidth. So I tend As to, a person who gets home from work at 2 a.m. Yeah, so I just, I, uh, I review the video to find a title or something, put a couple keywords in for the title, and then I just set it to upload and I go to bed. I mean, it's, so it's, it's nothing for me. Uh, I've uploaded, well, at last I looked... I've used about 27 gigs uploading videos to YouTube. Nice. Now, thankfully, that's all been on my home Wi-Fi. Yeah, I, <laughs> only a little bit's been data over the network, and I'm really glad that I have unlimited data for my mobile. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I definitely when I when I started doing a lot of really serious YouTube stuff, like we're talking like you know three four videos a week. Yeah. For a while there, or Vito, where it's a video every day. I definitely had that talk with my roommates, where I'm like, I use a lot of internet. Yeah. Time to upgrade the plan. Yep. It might be time to upgrade it again if I want to do some streaming, and I kind of want to do some more streaming. Just to um, increase your uh, speed? Yeah. Okay. But Because uh, I imagine you're probably on Unlimited. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't really... <laughs> I can't really... I upload a lot of videos to YouTube. Yeah. I upload a lot of videos that people never see, like stuff yeah. like the D&D games and things yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, my, my sort of history with vlogging is I started it to... to sort of get past anxiety and and as a as a creative outlet Mm -hmm. and it has transformed into mostly this podcast that i do with you yeah i think it really helps having somebody else that's kind of relying on you because then it's like okay well somebody else is relying on me so i gotta got i gotta pitch in my side of it or i gotta carry my 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 lion's share of it and I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff that I like doing with people. Yeah. Like, I really like doing Let's Plays with people. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's tricky to organize, which is why we haven't really done it that way for a while. Yeah. Um, but, like, playing music with Kaylee is the same idea. Uh, is that, you know, we have to practice, we have to record things, we have to... I have an idea. Uh-oh. Well, just because I want to try I want to try it. We can do it as a podcast, uh, and then maybe I'm committing us to this. Um, but we I, did the podcast where we write a song. It was about man spreading. Yeah, we no, there we that. we haven't finished mixing and writing the rest of it. Oh <laughs> god! No, no, but um, like for example, Angry Joe does, uh, and um, same with uh, what's Will Wheaton's group, um, Geek and Sundry, Ge- Geek and Sundry, where they do the the table. Maybe we should try like we'll film a vlog going to J and J's, picking out a game. Us like it would take a hell of a lot of editing to condense it all down to something that's digestible. Translation. Ryan would like me to do a <laughs> hell of a lot of editing. 
to this is the other thing actually this is the, in my history of vlogging um, <laughs> people have great ideas for <laughs> vlogs and uh, and it's sort of like there's there's this moment where you're like the the red hen baking bread people are like yeah I have this really great idea for a vlog it's like if you're a writer people will say things like I have this great idea for a story maybe you could write it and the answer is no to be fair once I save up a little bit more money and buy and build a computer that is capable of handling the the processing and editing and compiling that's when Huck starts editing the podcast that's when I can take over then I stop saying everything cool yeah yeah but so I mean I will one day knock on wood I'm not gonna do it because I'm gonna F with the the microphone but um yeah one day we will do it, but I think that would be kind of fun to pick. Like, even if it's a small card, it would, no, it, it, no. There, there's a there's a lot of fun to be had there. Yeah, uh, there's definitely a lot of cool um, channels that do stuff like that. Well, I mean, Will Wheaton with Tabletop, yeah. um, Shut Up and or Shut Up and Sit Down. Uh, he used to be on the Penny Arcade TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's all kinds of cool board gaming uh, and and tabletop gaming video series. I was I, I, I've been watching Titans Grave, which is mm-hmm. the Will Wheaton's tabletop game. And uh, it is the most demoralizing thing I have ever seen. I love it. It's amazing. Every part. It. Will Wheaton is running D and D, and Hank Green is playing in his goddamn game. And I'm like, this is reason number three hundred and seventy eight why Will Wheaton is cooler than I will ever be in my whole life. Yeah. And I hate him for it. <laughs> Only not really. But but no. One of the other things that happens when when people find out that you are a vlogger is they confuse you for, A, someone who is a wish-granting genie who (laughs) wants to accommodate all of their film-related wishes. I once had a guy attempt to convince me, and I I think he's right about this, Mm -hmm. but he was like, yeah, you know what nobody does? Like, you have all these, these, you know, videos about people playing games, but you never have anybody who just, like, reads the rules of the game and really gets into it. And it's just like, <laughs> here are the rules and here's how they interact. And I think there's really a market for that. And I think that he is not wrong, but I think that I am not the person to do that. I don't even really like board games that much. Like, they're okay, and I enjoy them, but I'm not, like, a board game guy. And tonight on Board Game Theater, Carl Chuddick's Innovation. We shall read the instructions. I played that game last night, actually. That is an awesome game. I won because no one else was doing anything. That, I always go for philosophy to tech up really quickly. Nope. Agriculture. Uh, I won off of agriculture. I, I love philosophy. I also love it because it's supposed to be... The, the picture on it, if you ever played, it's supposed to be, like, glass half empty or half full. No, no, no. We just, as a rule, it's a shot glass. <laughs> it is. But, it is nothing more. But yeah, like, like, like we can. We can. I mean, you can read those rules. People will confuse yeah. you for a videographer. Yeah. So they're like, "Oh, can you can you film this thing for me?" And I've done. A, I've done a bit of videography. Uh, we certainly on did a my bunch. Camera. <laughs> or um, I keep on my cell phone. Why do I keep calling it my camera? Um, because that's it's, what you use it for. Yeah. I know. No, I've done a bunch of videography. We did. I did the um, Balloon Manor in Rochester. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to do a bit. For uh, sort of videography and video stuff for Drew in general, mm-hmm. uh, who was in last week's podcast or the last podcast, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and like I have done, and I've done you know videos for other people's weddings and stuff like that. But I don't, I don't really like doing it in the way that I like doing this, mm-hmm. uh, or in the way that I like writing music because you're just sort of like taking videos of other people's stuff and then giving it to them. Yeah. Uh, and there's also that sort of back and forth project management of well here's what I want okay yeah. here's what I have and here's what I could shoot mm-hmm. um, and here's my skills which precludes me from doing something we, like yeah that. I mean like like we can try and do this thing that you want to do <laughs> I like or, to, uh, the other one that comes up all the time is here's this thing that's completely copyrighted <laughs> and I'm like cool one of the things we don't do is get sued yeah um, I was just going to say, I like taking pictures of flowers and posting them on Instagram, but that doesn't make me a professional photographer. No, it does not. So. And in the same way that, that yeah, like, like doing... The other thing that people will confuse you for is a filmmaker. Yeah. And I have, like, there, we have a cool filmmaking community here in town. I am not part of it. I really, like, I understand a little bit about cinematography but I'm really not a filmmaker. I don't know 
all of the things. We shoot this on a camcorder um, because I can take it places and it's easy and it has a really nice built-in microphone. Mm -hmm. Uh, But... I, yeah, and it, they're, they're just like, yeah, you know, it's all the same stuff. You just like make a movie. I'm like, no, N- no. That's like going up to a construction worker who's driving a bulldozer and being like, hey, can you just hop in that crane for five minutes? Mm-hmm. No. You know, we we really need you to just rivet these beams. I mean, maybe they can because they have a bunch of cross training, but. Um, you're banking on you're banking on your luck that you yeah. found the right person. Yeah. And I always try and encourage people when they have that moment to engage actual professionals because they will get not only will they get better quality work from that, mm-hmm. they will get better quality work with vastly less effort. Like professionals will know what they're doing. They know all the shortcuts they know what to look for and what shots to get Mm -hmm. and I am none of those things I just talk into a camera and operate a guitar and occasionally tell jokes Mm -hmm. Uh, and occasionally make fun of Ryan yeah and I I mostly just take my shirt off and film myself (laughs) that's actually there's a there's a huge market for that I don't know know if anyone told you I know um but yeah so so it's in that sort of weird history where people are just like yeah you know you do this thing, which means you can do this other thing. It's like, no, you play guitar so you can play piano. Hmm. No, they're, they're very different, hmm. and they're rel- they're they're relevantly different. And I would hate to like take a video of somebody's wedding that they completely hated. Yeah, because you no no do overs. Yeah, I like like can I, I can take fix a, it. <laughs> can I take a mulligan on your wedding? I can, I can fix it in post. Really, <laughs> really, you can fix the fact that you were filming your feet the whole time in post. Filters. Everything's filters. Oh, Seriously, God. I'll take a mulligan and I'll just like draw one less card. I did that one time. Yeah. Uh, not the mulligan. Uh, but I, I I got drafted to be an emergency videographer at a wedding. Because uh, they were just like, Jim, can you bring your tripod and your camera? It's like, yeah. We'll just set them up right here. I'm like, mm, you're going to need a human being to operate this. Can you be that human being? Yes. I like you guys. I'm here. Um... But I didn't have any of my other gear with me. I didn't have any of my extension cores. I didn't have any of my mobile tripods. All I had was a tripod and camera. Mm-hmm. I didn't even have a power cable for the camera. And so... Come on, Padre. Hurry up. I'm almost at back. No, 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 no. Right before the first dance. Camera dies. <laughs> no. Camera's like... Bop, bop, bop. <laughs> so I'm standing there filming their first dance in 1080p on my phone with it like wedged on top of the tripod so when I move the tripod the phone moves but it doesn't move anything in between because I don't have a case that has you can get phone cases that have tripod mounts on them and I don't have one Um, but the and and, and actually it, it after I put it through a bit of editing it actually turned out pretty well but if I were a big kid videographer that never would have happened no so yeah I mean vlogging is weird it's really fun though Mm -hmm. and it's the kind of thing that once you start doing it you find out really quickly like sort of if you like doing it and if you want to do it a lot or if you want to do it a little um or never again which is a perfectly reasonable outcome there's probably a couple of our uh co-hosts or um our guests that have come on that probably will be perfectly fine to never be invited back on again. Andrew hit me in the face! <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're totally going to get Andrew back in. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, he hit me in the face, but it was really funny. Yeah. Oh, man. So, when you are not vlogging, mm-hmm. when you have your shirt, say, on... Um, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing in those moments when you're not filming stuff? Uh, well, in the context of, like... And I, I touched on this a little bit before. The context of... Uh, if I were to not be vlogging, I would want to be writing stuff down. Mm. The problem is, is like it's a little bit more time-intensive. So, really, <clears throat> I end up... I would end up missing out on a lot of... A lot of... Um, 
I would I miss out on the ability to to um, record the memories down and have them in perpetuity, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I'm not vlogging, like uh, from a, I don't know, um, I do think about vlogging a lot more now when I'm not vlogging, looking for excuses to pull out my phone and and to do something. I mean, it's the same as when I uh, started tweeting. You know, you look for excuses to, to yep. tweet stuff. When I got Instagram, you look for excuses to take pictures of stuff. I got Snapchat. You know, again, I only Snapchat really to two people. One of my coworkers and my buddy Will, and then also to my, my feed. And then I watch uh, Hank Green's Snapchat feed, <laughs> uh, the online coach's Snapchat feed, uh, Mike Rugnetta from the PBS Idea ch- uh, Idea Show. Of idea course. Uh, and there's one other person, I think. Oh, I guess my coworker is the, the last one. Um, you know, so you, you look for excuses to, to do stuff. And again, I end up just snapping a lot of pictures or posting a lot of Instagram photos of my dog because that is usually the most interesting thing going on at that particular oh moment. Oh, my dog. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's... I guess maybe because I'm still new to it, it's it's a novelty. It might wear off, um, but I mean, I don't know. Like, it's not. I, I'm not at the point yet where I need to vlog. Um, it's just a convenient way for me to like get the stuff that's going on up here out of my head, so that I can f- devote my attention to other more important things. Fair enough. For me, if I am not taking video or making video. Uh, I am trying to be present. So I use the example. So uh, at the beginning of August, we had a huge D and D mashup game where we ended two campaigns simultaneously in this huge epic battle, and there was all kinds of cool stuff. and And I brought the video camera, but I didn't actually take any video because I needed to be present. I needed to answer questions. I needed to run the combat. I didn't need to add one more thing to do to my already packed to-do list. And I sort of couldn't really get anybody else to do it because nobody is interested in it in the way that I'm interested in it. Um, In the same way, like, this happens to me all the time at cons where I'm like, oh, I really want to get all this video and do like three or four con videos, and sometimes I've done that in the in, on the channel, but a lot of the time I'm too busy running around doing stuff, or I'm trying to to be present and hang out with my friends who don't always want to be in videos. It turns out <laughs> um, they have their own lives and uh, would like them to be untainted by you know my internet related antics that said Ryan Consul and I are going to uh, DDR juggle at every con we get the chance to because it's fun as hell but yeah when I when I'm not vlogging and I wish I was I'm sort of trying to participate because I don't feel like once I pull the camera out I'm sort of I feel like I'm not participating anymore I'm not part of that thing and I don't know how true that is but certainly I think in the in the sort of culture that I participate in, and like in the in the circles of friends that I have, uh, if you are behind the camera, you're not you're not part of that, and they're not they're not sort of performing antics for a camera. They're they're we are hanging out and doing friend stuff, mm-hmm. and that is a thing I want to be a part of, and that is sort of why I started vlogging was so I could better learn to be a part of that and articulate the parts of me that. Um, that makes sense too. But yeah, I still want to be taking those videos. Yeah, no. Because afterward, I always regret it. I'm like, oh, nothing, and I can't go back and get it because I'm not a time traveler yet. Uh, no, I, I am a time traveler. It, I can it just is, only go forward. It is interesting that uh, well, you did you were uh, when you were talking to the people in Singapore. I noticed that their calendar was set to September 2015. We're still August 31st. You were talking to the future. Uh-huh. 13 hours sometimes. into the future. Yes. Uh, but no, it's really interesting listening to when you say that. Like, I find um, social media... I tend to try to post things that other people will find interesting. Mm-hmm. And usually the feedback that I get tends to, like, 
give me enough of a dopamine shot to reinforce that behavior. So like when I was reading over my benefits package and I found an interesting commentary right, I. about like my benefits will not cover armed insurrections. But it was like it was just a really interesting thing that I ran across that I figured other people might find, yeah. you know, uh, some interest or humor or just you know it reminds me back uh, in high school when we were in writers craft and talking about like you look at the world and you try to sneak magic in any way that you can or try to yeah. look at things from a different perspective and oftentimes when I'm not filming I'm looking towards trying to see if I can spot those like I little like hidden I like magics. That phrase. I like that phrase. Yeah, oh, sneak man. sneak magic into the mundane. Oh man. Yeah. It's it's sort of weird for me because like for like for a lot of the, the, the vlogs and the videos that I that I do, part of it is also the amount of work that daunts me. So I'm like, oh, here's a video idea. Mm-hmm. I have a note. Here's an idea for a video. Mm-hmm. What do I have to do now? I have to write that video. Mm-hmm. I have to film that video, which means I have to set up all my gear and take it all down. I have to edit that video, mm-hmm. annotate it, upload it, etc., put it up. Yeah, that's a huge barrier. It is it is it is not actually a huge barrier. It is not that hard. I'm just kind of lazy. And so what I'll what I wind up doing is like trying to do it in one take, in which case the quality is never as good as it would have been if I'd written if I'd written it rather than just improving it mm-hmm. and then taking the best cuts of that improv. Mm-hmm. Um, the production value matters and something I, I, I sort of really want to try and step up. I've got a couple of really cool ideas that I want to try and do, but at the same time, it adds new layers of complexity, mm-hmm. which means learning stuff, building tools, and then using those tools, mm-hmm. which lazy and I have all these video games and I have this life and I kind of want to do things in it. And you need to go to a job. I do. I have <laughs> well no part of it too is yeah like I, I have um, a job now I work in software support and mm. I spend a lot of my day sort of being creative whether that's writing content for work or finding ways to work around or solve issues and there, you know, I, I definitely went through a big phase where it was just like come home, sleep for two hours, play video games for one, go to bed. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's definitely been a bunch of that. Um, it's especially th- like I don't really I don't really talk about my work um, because of reasons, but the you know it means that there's a big part of my day that I that I that I don't talk about or that I can't talk about mm-hmm. um, for for sort of various reasons. Uh, mostly having to do with NDAs, mm. like um, the law. Well, and and, it's and important <laughs> agreements that I have made that I that I attempt yeah. to very closely stick to. Yeah. Well. But you know there there's there's a lot going on there, and it's just one more thing I, I got to do. But at the same time, it's one more thing that every time I do it, I really like it, which is why we get all these videos coming out of the Poetry Slam. Mm. Um, I'm going to slam my first real written poem. I will have slammed my first real written poem by the time this comes out. I just dated us. <laughs> um, so we'll have, a, we'll have a video of that. It's probably abominable, but we'll see. We'll see what the quality's like on the poem and on the video, mm. but mostly the poem. Oh. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, conclusion, wrap up. You should make videos. Make yeah. things. Make things that make you happy. If anything, it falls in line. I believe at the beginning of this season, at the beginning of the year, we were talking about wanting to create more. And definitely, like, me vlogging has fulfilled that. And yeah. just us, like, before you took your summer hibernation break from, from oh. content creation, like, you my, were... Cons- my fall, winter, <laughs> you were spring, summer hi- But you were consistently hibernation. putting out a lot of content. Oh, like, it's, yeah. just, it's really interesting to switch from a consumption based diet to a production based lifestyle and uh, so I, I would encourage at least to, to try it out you know just just to have the experience of doing it it's a good yeah it yeah. is a good time to do at least once and if you do it more than once then you're laughing mm-hmm. um, and it's a good way to meet cool new people mm-hmm. it's also a good ma- way to meet mean new people yeah. depending on your comment section 
Just block those motherfuckers. Yeah. Or keep it private like I do. Yeah. I mean, you've seen the first couple of vlogs, but Jim didn't know I, I hit 22 today. Yeah, I was astonished. <laughs> like, really? You're making that much more content than me? You monster. And that's what happens. You film it on your phone, and then you just upload it, and it's done. No <sighs> scripting, no staging, no nothing. I just have to make sure to have the light source behind the camera so that I'm illuminated. <laughs> that's really the only consideration I have. I did that before I knew anything about lighting. I, uh, before I had any lights, I did my very first ever D&D live stream which I'm sitting at my desk and the windows are behind me and they didn't they just have a white curtain on them and it's the middle of the day <laughs> so I was completely blacked out and I noticed this when I started the stream I'm like oh oh crap and then you pitch shift your voice no and suddenly you are now anonymous <laughs> no what I did was I grabbed a bed sheet uh, like a black bed sheet and I safety pinned it up over my curtain real quick. And then I ran into another room and grabbed the desk lamp. And I put the desk lamp in the middle of my desk, pointed it at my face, and just blasted it into my eyes <laughs> for four hours <laughs> like an idiot. Now I have better lights and we can do that much better. Yeah. But that first, that first stream where I was just like, I don't. Oh, yeah, because it's not nighttime. Yeah. Hi, y'all. You have to start somewhere. All right. And we do have to start and finish and wrap up. Yeah. So I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And we're going to sign off because it's late. Stay awesome. Do you, do you seriously close out Everyone all of your, all of your awesome. vlogs to, to feature me? Yep. With Stay Awesome? Yep. That's amazing. You suggested it, and I like the suggestion. Oh, yeah, that's right, I did. When I watched your first one, and it was just like, I'm confused by why it doesn't end with Stay Awesome. Yeah, so now all of them, I tell myself to stay awesome.